Welcome to Remade Academy. Today, we're using VO3, Flux Context, and C Dream V3 to create consistent scenes and characters. Just before we begin, I've made this template canvas, which will include this full tutorial video, as well as all of the main assets we'll be generating. I've linked this template in the description, and later in the video, we'll go through it, and I'll explain exactly why it's the easiest way to get started. In film, consistency is what makes a story feel real. If characters look different between shots, or the lighting shifts, or the scene layout suddenly changes, the illusion breaks. And with AI, this used to happen all the time, but not anymore. So today I'll be showing you exactly how I made this fantasy scene and how I kept everything consistent. Step one, scene concepting. For ideation, I used this custom GPT I made, which is great at concepting and generating prompts for VO3 and the other models we'll be using. The link to this GPT is in the description. We're working hard to get LLM intelligence on Remade, so soon you'll be able to do this and much more without having to leave the canvas. I like to keep it quite general to start with, so I simply told it what I wanted to do and asked it to give me some ideas. After getting some more ideas, we landed on this one. A medieval tavern scene involving an elf and a dwarf who exchange some sort of artifact. I also liked the shot suggestions it gave me, and I was already starting to picture a scene in my head. Now of course we haven't finished concepting. You could flesh out the characters first, or maybe the setting, but when using AI tools I like to generate visuals of a complete shot as soon as possible and then iterate from there. Now that we have this tavern scene concept, I'll ask for a prompt for Sea Dream V3 that depicts a medium shot in the tavern interior with background characters, with the main characters sitting opposite each other on a table, and with the artifact visible on that table. This is the prompt we got, which fits the criteria. Now we'll go to the remade canvas to generate the image. Okay, so now I have the prompt copied and I'm going to start a new canvas. Okay, we'll call it something like, uh, let's call it something like consistent scenes. Okay, now the first thing you want to do is head over to this generation toolbar here. If it's not visible, then you'll want to click this generate button first. And we'll head over to image. We'll choose Sea Dream V3. Now the reason for Sea Dream V3 is that it's just great at making these sort of stylistic animated shots. I'm going to keep it at landscape. I'm going to change the number of images to four. I'll expand this prompt box here. Control V that. Okay, that all looks good. Confirm. And we'll click this button here to generate. Okay, I'll be back with the results. Okay, so here are the results. Now, I really like the style of this. I could iterate further, but because this is a video more about consistent scenes than world building, I'll just choose my favorite one, and then I'll generate the rest of the scenes based on this one. So I think for me, I'll probably go with this one. This is a nice medium shot, which features both characters and the setting as well. So I can just favorite this like this. And now we can move on to step two. Step two, creating a storyboard. Now that we have this main shot, we can use it to build the other shots in the scene. But first, we'll need to plan what the shots will be. Now, I won't go into full detail on how I did this because it depends on your creative vision. But as a summary, you can see here that I worked with a GPT to come up with a full scene breakdown. So I've called this episode The Choice based on the story. We've come up with six different shots, one after the other. We've named the tavern the Crystal Stag. The dwarf is called Dern and the elf is called Tessera. We start with an exterior establishing shot of the crystal stag. We then move on to the medium shot, the static we've already generated of Dern and Tessera with dialogue and action as well. Uh, I won't go into full detail on all of these shots, but you can pause to have a look. And now that we have this, we can start to build our storyboard. I'm now gonna use Windows Shift S to take screenshots of each of these scenes, and these will be the text of our storyboard. Okay, now back on the canvas, I'm gonna be adding those assets in. So we click this button here, and I've made a folder over here called Storyboard. So I'm going to select all of these screenshots and then I also have this 16 by 9 image placeholder which we'll use for the storyboard until we get all our shots. So we just click that and then open. Now these will automatically appear on the canvas. Now I'm going to organize these assets in my canvas. I'll make the images a bit smaller and I'll copy paste the placeholder image and put it above each piece of text. One great thing about the canvas is that you can do this however you like. Now we'll group all of this together using sections and we'll call the section storyboard. I'll copy paste the medium shot, which is our second scene, and I'll replace the placeholder with it. For the other images, I'll place them in a section that I'll call rough work. Generally, if you have assets that are related, sections are a great way of grouping them on the canvas. Step three, finalizing static shots. Okay, so we already have this shot, which means we'll just need to generate the other five. Now, the easiest one will likely be the exterior shot, because it's the only shot that's actually outside the tavern. For all of these other shots, we need to make sure that the scene looks exactly like this. So, we'll start with that, and we'll use Sea Dream again. Now, because this chat already has context, I'll just ask it to give me a prompt for scene one. So, I'll just say, give me a prompt 
for scene one for the C Dream V3 model. Okay, so now I've copied the prompt and I'll open the generation toolbar. We'll go back to C Dream V3 and again, four images so we get some variation and I'll expand this prompt box again, control V, confirm and we will generate. Okay, so here are the results. Now, I think I probably like this one the best, so I'll favorite it. And I'll just resize these so they can all fit within the rough work section, which I can extend down like this. And I'm going to copy and paste this and we'll get rid of the placeholder. So just send this over here. And so now we already have two of our six shots. Now for the rest of the shots, because they're all inside this tavern, we need to make sure they stay consistent. So for this, we'll use Flux Context. And let's start with shot number three, which is the over-the-shoulder shot, so from Dern to Tessera. And the first thing we'll need to do is use this shot here as our reference to Flux Context. So here's what we do. Click on this, Reference, Add as Reference. You can see here it's been added as a reference in our Generation Toolbar. You can see that Flux Context has been automatically switched to. And if we just control A this, we can now write what we want to see. So I'll write something quite descriptive, like the woman is looking at the man in the foreground who is facing away from the camera in a shot that is over the man's uh, shoulders. Okay, now we'll leave it at 16 by 9 and four images, and I'll just generate this over here. So here are the results. You can see that sometimes it does get a bit confused, so it seems to have almost kind of fused the two characters together in this shot, but luckily the other ones have turned out quite good. And I'll probably go with this one, so I'll favorite it, and I'll just copy this, resize, and I'll replace the placeholder with it. Okay. Let me just center this. And now we can take these over here and send them over to the rough work section. So just make them a bit smaller. And now this will form part of our rough work. Okay, so that's three out of the six shots done. Now for the fourth shot, which is the close up of the dwarf, you can see that we already have this image here as a reference in the toolbar. So that stayed. So all we need to do now is change the prompt. So I'll say something like, Generate a close-up of the bearded man seen in the reference image inside the same medieval tavern, and I'll go with this. So here are the results for this one. Now, I think I like this one the best because he's facing more squarely towards the camera, but if you notice, there's a slight issue here. So you can see that behind the dwarf, there's a fireplace. In this medium shot, there's also a fireplace in the far end of the tavern. And in this shot, there's also a fireplace behind the elf. Now, I haven't seen many taverns that have three fireplaces, so what we can do is actually in-paint this to get rid of it. To do this, we'll click on the image, then edit, then inpaint. Then we'll use the brush to outline the area we want to change, so in this case the fireplace, and we can use the rectangle to fill in the rest. Now we'll just tell it to remove the fireplace in the background and click apply. Okay, so here's our result. You can see it's done exactly what we asked for, so no more fireplace anymore. I'll just favorite this and I'll clean up the assets exactly like I've done before. So these in the rough work and then this in the storyboard. Okay, so now for scene five, which is a close up on the elf woman. So what I'll actually do is I'll use this image as a reference because you can see her face is more visible here than it is in this one, for example. So again, click, reference, add as reference. You can see it's been added here. And I'll say something like, generate a close up of the woman seen in the reference image inside the same medieval tavern setting. And I'll choose four again. So let's see how this does. Okay, so these have turned out great. I think this one's my favorite, so I'll favor it and then I'll clean up again. Now, the last thing to do is this insert shot, the close-up of the crystal itself. So for this last one, because the crystal is more visible here, we'll add this as our reference image. So add as reference, and we will control V this prompt here. Generate a cinematic insert shot focused on the glowing crystal seen in the reference image, resting at the center of a wooden tavern table. And let's see how this turns out. Okay, so I think the clear winner here is this one. I think the other three have forgotten that there's supposed to be two characters on the table. So I'll favorite this, I'll clean up the assets, and I'll add this to the storyboard. And we can move on to step four. Step four, static shots to videos. Now that our storyboard is complete and we have all of our static shots, the next step is to use VO3 image to video to turn these into videos. So I'll show you for the first two examples exactly how I did this, and for the rest you can find out on the canvas template. 
Okay, so shot number one, the exterior establishing shot of the crystal stag. Now, the good news is we've actually already done a lot of the hard work. We have this static shot here, which will be our first frame of the video, and we have the description of what we want to happen in the scene. So I'll just download these, and then I will head off to the GPT. Okay, so now with the GPT, I'll just attach these as references. So the both the description and the start frame, and I'll tell it, given the scene description and the start frame I have attached, give me a VO3 uh, image to video prompt to achieve this. And we'll wait for the result here. Here's the prompt. It's quite descriptive, so I won't read all of it, but here's why it works well. It has a good compositional direction, so this slow cinematic push-in is exactly what we wanted. It also has a good description of the setting, so even though we're using this start frame, it's still good to describe the scene in text to VO. Now, because this scene has no dialogue or characters, the rest is just gonna be descriptions of the ambient, so the ambient visuals and the ambient audio. Now, for any scene like this, you should check your VO prompt and make sure that all of these are covered. Okay, so I copied the prompt and I'm now back on Remade, so I'll show you how to use VO3 to do this. So this is the start frame we'll be using. So if we click it, click Reference, use a start frame. Now we'll change the model to VO3. And because we've copied this prompt, we'll expand this and Control v it in here. Just do a final check and make sure that it's all good and confirm. Now I'll generate this twice just so we have a bit of variation. So that's the first one and then we'll do one more. So this will take about two minutes and I'll show you how this turns out. Now both of these shots are actually almost identical, but I'll show you the one I'll be using, which is this top one. You can see it's done a good job of the ambient noises. And this sort of slow push in towards the door of the tavern is uh, also great. Okay, so that's our first scene done. So I'm gonna favorite this one, and we can also organize these into the next section. So probably just move them like this, and then add a section called, we'll call it something like, unedited shots. Okay, so now it's time to move on to shot two. So this is a more complicated shot because it involves both of our main characters. It involves the crystal in the middle here, and it's set in the interior of this tavern. So we need to make sure that the fires, the background characters all look good. Like before, I'll give the GPT both the start frame and the scene description, and I'll ask for a VO3 image to video prompt. So as you can see, the prompt is really quite complex. Again, I won't go into it in a huge amount of detail, but I've broken it down and color-coded it to show you the parts to talk about the camera composition, the setting, character descriptions, ambient visuals, dialogue, character action, ambient audio, and background action. So for any scene that's this complex, you wanna make sure that these are covered. I'll also include this image in the canvas template. So now back on the canvas, again, we will use this now as our start frame. So reference start frame, and it should change down here. So now we'll just control A this and copy paste our new prompt in. So control A, control V, and this is all looking good. So confirm, and we'll generate two variations again. So I just had a look at these, and I think that this bottom one here is my favorite. I'll play it. <sighs> Didn't think you'd bring one of those. Okay, nice. That's pretty much done what we wanted. And I think that looks great. So I'm just going to favorite this one and we will drag these over here as well into the unedited shots section. So as you can see here, I've gone ahead and I've created the rest of the videos. And now I'm going to play them all together and you'll see why the next step is going to be so important. <sighs> Didn't think you'd bring one of those. That's your share. I don't care what you do with it, but if you take it, it's yours. Things humming like it wants to bite. Looks cursed to me. You know what these things are. It's your choice. Step five, video editing. So clearly there were lots of problems with that video. 
For me, the main problems were number one, the background audio is very inconsistent. So from shot to shot, it changes and it breaks immersion. Number two is that the cuts are too sudden. Number three is that the shots are too long. So when I expect the scene to change, it keeps dragging on. And number four, it's generally unpolished without any nice looking transitions or effects. So I'll show you how I quickly edited this on CapCut. So for the first problem where the background audio is inconsistent, I got this stock audio of medieval fantasy tavern ambience with no music. And in this scene here on the outside of the tavern, it's quite quiet, but as soon as it cuts to the indoors, it gets louder while continuing from the same place. So I'll show you how this sounds. You can see it starts quiet. And then it gets noticeably louder as soon as we enter this. I've also added this creepy ambient drone sound effect to make it a bit more suspenseful, which you might be able to hear. If I can raise the volume. Sounds like this, but I made it a lot quieter. You can also see that I've cut each of the clips so that the scene flows a lot better. Now as for the polish, in the beginning I've added this black fade transition, and it's quite long, so it looks like this. And obviously I've put this text in, so the show is called What Remains in Stone, and this is episode 1, The Choice. Now, I've also added this distortion effect here, from scene 5 to scene 6. And I've added the filter to sort of drown out the voices in the background. And then at the end there's going to be a transition to black. So I'll show you the result of all of this now. Didn't think you'd bring one of those. That's your share. I don't care what you do with it, but if you take it, it's yours. Thing's humming like it wants to bite. Looks cursed to me. You know what these things are. It's your choice. Finally, let's go through the Consistent Scenes canvas template. So, here is the canvas template. Now, you might notice that it looks a bit different to the rest of the video, and that's because just before I finished recording, we pushed a big change that's massively improved the usability of the canvas. Everything I showed before is still pretty much the same. We still have an almost identical generation toolbar. One slight difference, though, is that now instead of sections, we have frames, which you can access up here in the top toolbar. So if you click this and then drag, we get our frame, which we can place assets inside of, just like sections. Now, the great thing about the template is that for any of the assets here, you can actually zoom in, click on this information icon, and then you can see the asset on the left and the prompt and the model that was used to generate it on the right. That's also the same for the VO videos. So if we zoom into one of those, we can press this information icon and we can play the video on the left here. <sighs> and we can also see, so this is the complex prompt from earlier that was used to generate this and VO3 image to video is the model. Now, another thing you can do is actually regenerate these with the same prompt and the same model by clicking this regenerate button and you can see that it's automatically placed the prompt here and it's chosen the right model so if you want to generate your own consistent scenes then this template's a great place to start now i'll also include this full video on the template itself and i'll share the link to it in the description that's it for this video thank you very much for watching this is only the second video in the remade academy series and there's many more on the way please leave any questions in the comments and check the description for the important links for now i'll see you in the next one